So my two pronged strategy for dealing with this whole lockdown situation is pretty straightforward to be perfectly honest. First of all, buy shit loads of beer and second of all, drink the shit out of that beer. And so far, if I do say so myself, it's been working out pretty damn good. However, my increased allocation of funds to the booze pot has emptied out my savings pretty fast, which means less money to spend on other consumables. And if you find yourself in a similar situation and you're desperate to buy a new smartphone at the same time, well, don't worry, this is the video for you. Yeah, that entire introduction was basically my half assed segue into why budget phones are so bloody brilliant, and 2020 has seen the launch of loads of excellent cheap Android handsets, which still manage to boast excellent battery life, multi-lens cameras, and all of the features that you would hope for. Now this year we've seen the launch of a lot of great budget smartphones and I've been reviewing as many of them as humanly possible. So this right here is my full on roundup of the best sub 200 pound budget smartphones that I've personally tested. And for more of the latest greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. Now one of the first smartphone manufacturers to really nail the budget market was Motorola. And even after multiple acquisitions, it is still going strong. The recently released Motorola Moto G8 delivers a satisfying all-round experience for just 180 quid. As far as looks go show, the Moto G8 ain't anything special. Like most budget phones, this is a plastic blower offering little in the way of frills or flair. However, what you get is a stock Android experience that is very easy to get along with. So that means you get all of the latest Android features on there like a proper dark mode and gesture navigation, plus a few Motorola bonuses as well like a dedicated one-handed mode. And performance is dependable thanks to the Snapdragon 666 platform backed by 4 gigs of RAM. You can even get stuck into some light gaming if you want to blow off some steam by blowing off someone else's skull. And battery life is strong enough to see you through a pretty long day every day. The Motorola Moto G8 is fine for media streaming too with a respectable 720p HD display, though there is sadly no stereo speaker action here. Meanwhile, the triple lens rear camera is unsurprisingly a little bit limited, although the Moto G8 can still take good looking photos in respectable light and helped along by some AI smarts. Now if your budget is a little bit more limited or battery life is a serious priority, you might be more tempted by the Motorola Moto G8 Power Lite. It's the most affordable entry in Motorola's new G series lineup for 2020, started at just 150 quid. This serves up similar specs to the vanilla Moto G8, except now you get a much bigger 5000 milliamp battery, which should keep you going for two full days if you don't lean on the gas too hard. Now if you want to see these two Moto G8 smartphones compared side by side along with the rest of the Moto G8 family, then go check out my mega Moto comparison which is live right now. One of the best alternatives to Motorola is the Realme 6i, which starts from just 189 quid here in Blighty. My green T model looks rather slick despite its plastic finish, but it's the rest of the phone that really, really impresses. You get a 720p HD display again that is bright and reasonably poppy, and an impressive set of features including NFC and Bluetooth 5 support. And yes, it is just a MediaTek chipset running the show here, but thankfully the Realme 6i isn't a stuttery lump. You'll see the odd little stammer, but overall it's fairly smooth for everyday shenanigans. That quad lens rear camera setup offers ultra wide angle smarts as well as a dedicated portrait snapper. And the Realme 6i proves absolutely fine for capturing everyday memories. That massive 5000 mAh battery also gets a thumbs up, equaling the Moto G8 Power Lite and making this one of the best phones of 2020 for battery life, complete with a bit of 18 watt fast charging. Overall, this Realme blower is solid value for cash and not much cash at that as well. Now all eyes may be on Sony Mobile's latest amazing Billy Big X flagship smartphone, the Xperia 1 Mark II, which comes rocking a price tag over a thousand pounds. But at the other end of the scale, for just 170 quid right now in the UK, you can bag yourself the Xperia L4 which boasts a few of the same advantages. You get the same super skinny 21 by 9 finish as that premium flagship phone, so the L4 is comfy to fondle, while many of the latest movies play with zero letterboxing on that 6.2 inch IPS display. Although yeah, there is a pesky notch intruding on the action here. Still, it is a crisp and colourful panel, and that stretched aspect ratio is also very well suited to multitasking with two apps at once. Unfortunately, one obvious problem with the Xperia L4 is its ancient creaky software. What you get here is the old Android 9 OS on board, with no sign of an Android 10 upgrade in sight. So yeah, that means no dark mode, no gesture navigation, yada yada yada. And like the Realme 6i, it's a MediaTek chipset stuffed inside, but once again, performance is on the whole dependable, and like gaming is still definitely possible. And while the 3580 milliamp battery is definitely outshone by others in this best budget roundup, I found it was strong enough for all day play, no worries. 
The Xperia L4's rear 30 megapixel primary lens can capture sharp, natural looking photos, although it is easily thrown by imperfect lighting, like many budget phones. And you also have a 5 megapixel ultra wide angle lens to play around with and a portrait mode for adding bokeh to your shots, but that is pretty much it for bonus features, while the Full HD video chops are alright for your simple home movies. Now any roundup of the best budget smartphones in 2020 would be somewhat amiss without a bit of Xiaomi action because after all, the Chinese manufacturer is swiftly becoming one of the champions of cheapy mobiles. And for fewer than 200 British quids, you could have a pick of a few different Xiaomi handsets including the excellent Redmi Note 8T. While most budget blowers sport a basic plastic frame, the Mighty Note rocks a Gorilla Glass 5 chassis with a splash resistant coating, so it's a proper tough mother. And it looks pretty damn smart too. Boot it up and you'll be treated to a bit of MIUI 11, which is Xiaomi's equivalent of Color OS. It is a bit hit and miss, for instance there's no apps tray, which is rather troublesome. But on the plus side you get plenty of great features in there as well, including a dedicated dark mode, you get a good one-handed feature as well, you get proper gaming tools, all kinds of stuff. And this budget blower is a proper media monster too. The Redmi Note 8T boasts a full HD 6.3 inch IPS screen with only a dinky wee nipple notch poking its way in, which means your movies and telly shows will look rather lovely. And thankfully the rather miserly 32 gigs of storage can be boosted with a micro SD memory card. And you also get Qualcomm's very capable Snapdragon 665 platform crammed inside just like you did on the Moto G8, although you'll definitely want to get the model of Redmi Note 8T with 4 gigs of RAM just to keep that running extra smooth. And no worries with the battery life either, that 4000mAh cell keeps you going for a full day and a half between charges, while the 18 watt fast charge actually gets you filled up in a jiffy. And I'm also definitely a fan of the quad lens rear camera setup. You'll get quality long photos in almost any conditions, and you've also got a dedicated night mode for those low light shots, while the 4K video chops are just as strong as any other budget blower under that £200 mark. So those are my personal picks of the best sub £200 smartphones that I've personally tested and reviewed, but of course there are a few that I haven't quite managed to get around to review them because there are just so bloody many budget smartphones, it's not physically possible for one person to handle them all. So for instance, one budget friendly handset that I haven't had the chance to review yet is Samsung's Galaxy A20e. It costs 150 quid SIM free on the likes of Amazon, and it's a reasonably compact model as well, something that's becoming increasingly rare in 2020. The 5.8 inch display almost completely fills the front, serving up punchy HD visuals, while the 13 megapixel rear camera is backed by a 5 megapixel wide angle lens, something that you don't see too often at that 150 pound price point. So if you're a Samsung fan, that could well be worth checking out. And of course, have I missed start your own personal favourite budget smartphone, it'd be great to hear from you down in the comments below, please let me know what your own personal picks are, and for more on the latest greatest tech please do pop subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers everyone, love you!